Hi, welcome to today's video. So today's video is all about the makeup products I used in the month of September. So September was kind of a busy month for me. I had a lot of events. I had a lot of things work-wise, everything. So it was pretty busy and it was a fun month as well. And I did travel quite a bit. So I took quite a bit of this makeup with me traveling and they all traveled pretty well. So I will point them out as I go through them. And I don't think there's too much, but I did use these products pretty consistently in September. And a lot of them are basically from my stash. So I don't think there's anything really new per se in this uh, bunch of makeup today. So yeah, so first off, let's start with the bronzer I was using. And this is the same bronzer that I was using the previous month as well. Um, I basically just fell in love with it all over again. I picked it out from my stash, I think in the month of uh, August to use. And I fell in love with it so much, I just couldn't put my, you know, the, the bronzer back and, you know, try something else. I just wanted to keep using it. So this month too, I was using this one. And this is the uh, Dolce Diva Baked Bronzer in the shade 02 Perfect Sienna. And this is from Kiko Milano. And this bronzer, I think, was released like two years ago as part of their summer collection. And this one, I love the formula. I love the shade. It's basically a nice, beautiful, baked bronzer with the swirls in there and it's just the perfect shade you just i'm actually wearing it today it's it just it just melts into the skin it's just flawless the bronzer always gives me like that very nice um i kind of use it in the hollows of my cheek and it kind of helps uh create a bit of shadow although it's not a contour and i just generally like to take a big fluffy brush and just go around near my jaw and you know like my forehead and things like that and it just works really well so it's perfect for my skin tone and usually Kiko Milano is very good with uh, repeating some of these um, cult favorites like I think Perfect Sienna is kind of a shade that keeps coming back every now and then in their summer collections or even in their like spring collections so keep an eye out you might be able to grab one of their baked bronzers in some one of their uh, limited limited edition collections that would be coming out soon so I think this was the shade was repeated maybe like even this year I'm uh, but unfortunately I think this year's full collection was not really available in the US but I think in Europe they did release the baked uh, bronzer in this particular shade in the new limited edition summer collection so that bronzer I love it I've been using it a lot and um, yeah I think next month I should probably try something else from my collection because I do have a pretty big collection and my aim with all of this is to use as much as uh, as much makeup as possible from my collection so yeah so that was the main bronzer that i used now the highlighter is from give beauty and i think i spoke about this in my last video so i did um i think this was yeah this was the first this month was the first time i was actually trying this out although i got this like a couple of months ago i just got around to trying it this month and i did use it quite a bit and i loved it so it gives you a very nice subtle glow on the face, uh, on the cheekbones and it's kind of the perfect highlighter if you like a very subtle highlight which you can use in any sort of uh, setting whether it's a formal or an informal uh, setting so that way this is a very beautiful product. You could also kind of go a little bit crazy with it and it still won't look too overboard. It would still give you just a nice nice lit from within kind of glow and those that kind of natural finish natural glow is what I usually look for in um, highlighters and this one delivers and I really like the checkered packaging um, and I also like how the packaging inside is also like this you know three different shades so I usually just swirl my brush and mix all the shades together and I use that as a highlight. I haven't actually gone individually into each square and tried to pick up the individual colors yet. I think it's a bit small for that, unless you're using a very pointed uh, precision type of uh, highlighter brush. But yeah, it kind of works well. So th this particular highlighter comes in like three different shades and I have this in the shade Homegrown Glow, which is kind of the uh, middle shade. So I'm guessing this is more for those with medium skin tones. And I think this one works really well for me. Um, and yeah, I'm overall really happy with it. The only thing I think I've mentioned it even in my previous video, the only thing I don't like about this one is the scent. It has like a very strong baby powder type of scent, which you can kind of sniff every time you open the palette. But otherwise on the face, you don't really smell it once it's on. So because of that, it doesn't really bother me so much. So yeah, so this was another product that I absolutely adored and had a lot of fun using this whole month. So 
yeah so that was the highlighter that i primarily used and i think yeah that's the one i'm actually wearing right now too on the high points of my cheeks so yeah so that was the bronzer and the highlighter now with blushes i think yeah i used three different powder blushes and one cream blush the cream blush is actually the new one that i've used the new product that i use this month and this is from the kiko milano days in bloom collection this is a three in one silky all over liquid blush so this is a uh, part of i think their spring collection which i eventually picked up on a sale sometime in july or so so i just got around to trying this one and i love it it's beautiful it's basically the blush i have on my cheeks right now it's just so easy to apply you just need the teeny tiniest drop on each cheek and then you can just easily buff it in with a uh, i use a stippling brush you can use even a, any dense brush would be fine too i think um this particular shade is not super pigmented that it might give you clown cheeks at least in my experience i feel like it's a very easy to use uh, a warm tone I, mean, I think maybe neutral pink yeah i would describe this as a slightly neutral pink uh, it's not too cool it's not too warm so it kind of goes uh, with a lot of um, looks like a lot of clothes a lot of your lip products like if you suddenly want to put on a blush and you don't have to worry about it looking clashing with your outfit i think this is a perfect shade oh yeah i forgot to mention the shade name oh yeah this is a shade 04 it has a name but i don't see it on the sticker so yeah it's number 04 i believe these products are still available on kiko's website if you are interested i did see that they are 50 percent off i believe i also picked these up when they were 50 percent off so these are still in stock and this is a product that i really enjoy now this is a 3-in-1 product but I haven't actually used it on my lips nor have I actually tried it on my eyes. Uh, so it's basically meant to be used on the eyes, lips and cheeks and I have actually strictly used it on my cheeks and I love it as a liquid blush. Um, the texture is pretty, um, what do I say, it's, it's, it's not too thick so I think it would look really nice on the lips as well. On the eyes I'm not sure, maybe depending on your taste. I'm generally not a matte look for the eye type of person and generally these days I'm not even wearing any eye products on my eyes. So yeah, so if you like that kind of a matte uh, or actually maybe it would give you more of a satiny finish on the eye because on the cheeks I do notice that it's not a very matte finish. It's got a tiny bit of a healthy glow to it. So you could say it's kind of like a satin finish. So even on the eye it might give you more of a satiny finish versus like a full on matte. So yeah, I believe that's how it probably would look. <laughs> but yeah, since I haven't tested it out on my eyes, I'm not sure exactly what it would look like. But on the cheeks, I really love it and I really enjoy it. And it's quite a lot of product, actually. I don't know if I'll ever finish this one. <laughs> like a lot of the other liquid products that I have, I hope I get to use it um, as much as I can before it goes bad. Now, in terms of powder products, powder blushes, I have this one from... Anna Sui. This is from my collection. I think this is easily at least three or four years old. This is the Anna Sui Sui Black Powder Blush in the shade 401. I know that she was selling this line of blush till about recently. I'm not sure if it's still available, uh, if she's discontinued it or something, but if you can get your hands on this line of blush, I highly recommend because they're very, very easy to work with. The shade here, for example, the one which I have, which is 401, it looks like a very punchy color, but it's very easy to use um, in the sense it, it is it diffuses really well on the cheeks. So even if you pick up too much product and you kind of buff it into your face, it does like diffuse evenly and it doesn't look like clown cheeks. Um, again, of course, you have to control the amount. You can't take too much, but in case accidentally you do pick up a bit too much of product, you can still buff it in and it looks really nice on the cheeks and also i love the scent it has like this rose scent to it which i think because it's getting a little bit old now it's no longer that strong as it was when i initially got it i kind of enjoy the rose scent initially i think i found it to be too um too powdery rose but recently i've started liking it a bit more the scent so yeah so this is the anasui blush that i have this is more like a matte blush so I like to go a little bit more crazy with the highlight when I'm wearing this blush and altogether it just looks really pretty on the face. So yeah, so this blush, I really, really like the formula. It's um, a very easy to use powder blush. And I think 
it used to be av easily available in the US. I'm not sure if this is, I don't even remember where I picked this one up. I'm trying to th remember if I bought it outside the US or if I picked it up here because yeah, I, I don't know. So yeah, so anyway, I really love this blush. If you have this, I highly recommend taking it out of your collection and playing with it. It's a beautiful one. And um, yeah, the packaging is quite cute too. I like the black packaging and the artwork on here. It's not a very, um, what do I say? It's not a very heavy compact. It does feel like drugstore plastic in my opinion, but it's still kind of nice. The component is still well made. It's not ugly plastic. If I don't know if I'm making sense, but yeah, sometimes you have these plastic components which are light and they also look so cheap and tacky. This one, it, I mean, it's not the heaviest plastic, but it's still well made, so it's okay. So, yeah, so that's the Anosui blush. Now, the other powder blush I was using is this one from Give Beauty. Again, I think I spoke about it in detail in my previous video. This is the Feeling Cheeky Amplifying Blush Duo in the shade Flirty Talk. So, I like the packaging of this one too. Although I think I sort of like the highlighter packaging a little bit more. I like the checkerboard a bit more than the than the Paisley's. Um, so the flirt, the shade Flirty Talk is basically a beautiful coral shade and a more orange looking shade. I love this. This duo works really well together. I like to kind of um, use the darker shade a little bit towards the back of my cheeks and the lighter shade towards like the center out here near the apples of my cheeks. So it kind of looks really pretty working together like that. And also you can use it on its own individually as well. And I really like the formula again of this one. This is also an easy to use powder product. It does have a bit of kick up in the pan. So you have to be a little careful when you go in with your brush. But on the face, it does not feel or look powdery. It blends in really nicely. It kind of um, meshes in with your skin. So overall, I really like how this one performs. And again, like with the highlighter, the scent of this product is again very baby powderish to me and I'm not a big fan of it. I feel like this is more scented than the highlighter for some reason. Yeah, I think it has more of that strong scent. But anyway, once it's again like the highlighter, once it's on your cheeks, you don't really um, smell it anymore. So it's kind of okay with me. So yeah, I really like the two shades in there. And um, the blush duos, she has like a very nice range of colors. Um, a lot of them are harder to find. I think they've kind of sold out everywhere. But yeah, this one, I think I still see it at um, TJ Maxx every now and then. So if you really like those type of warm shades, I highly recommend picking that one up. Now, the last powder blush that I used was this one from Moira. And this is the Moira Signature Ombre Blusher in the shade 04 Mon Morning Sunshine. Um, this blush, I think I bought it like almost two years ago and I haven't really used it much simply because it's super pigmented and it's every time I use it, I have to be a little bit careful, especially if my blush brush goes further down towards this deeper side of the palette. Um, so, so this, this time I actually got a little bit more use. The, I think the first time I bought it, I used it like maybe one or two times. And then, you know, I just found it too much work and I just put it aside. But this time I did use it a little bit more and I like it. It's nice, um, but it's nothing special to me. I mean, the formula is nice. It's very pigmented, like I said, so you have to be a little bit careful. And the imprint is nice, but is it something that you must have if you don't have it? I don't think so. If you have it in your collection, I recommend pulling it out and playing with it because, I mean, it's it's still an okay, it's still a nice product. But again, considering there's so many nice blushes coming out right now, I don't know if this one kind of measures up to a lot of those. Um, I think this was priced at somewhere around $8, which is kind of a nice price though. But yeah, but I don't, I don't know. I probably would never buy another shade in this range. So yeah, so I'm, but I'm happy with the one I have and I'm happy to use this as much as I feel like using it. I have a feeling it might get decluttered in a while, but as of now, I'm going to keep using it. So those are my thoughts. I know it's a very mixed uh, <laughs> mixed review sort of thing for this particular blush because I'm still not sure if I really like it. Despite using it maybe like 10 times this month, I, I, I haven't been able to make up my mind if this is like a love. It's kind of just there. It's, it's mid. <laughs> so yeah, so this is the other blush that I used this month. Um, 
I mean, if you ask me to choose, for example, between this and this, I would choose this. If you ask me to choose between this one and this one, I would choose this. Of course, the price points are different here, but still, um, I would think that this is just okay. Um, so yeah, so that those are my thoughts on the Moira blush. Um, all right, now in terms of lip products, I basically use like just four lipsticks throughout the whole of this month. Um, one of them is this one from Revlon. This is the Revlon uh, Super Lustrous Lipstick in the shade Rose Velvet. I picked this up, I think, maybe like two or three months ago, and I was very happy to play with it again. I had used this quite a bit around the time I picked it up, and then after that, I just put it in my drawer and forgot about it. And this one is a very easy to throw on nude shade. It kind of is very similar to the lipstick I'm wearing right now. The one I'm wearing is from Give Beauty. Um, the one is, I'm wearing is called Lovable Me. So these two, they kind of look the same. This one on screen, it looks a little bit more pink. This one looks a little bit more brown. But I think overall on my lips, I feel like both of them look a bit similar. So these two lipsticks, the Revlon... Uh, rose velvet shade as well as the lovable me um yeah the lovable me shade from give you uh, give beauty have been like my you know quick easy to throw on lipsticks because they're such neutral shades and they just like brighten up my face without really putting any too much color on my lips so yeah i love these they are both very nice everyday easy to use top type of shades the one uh the the Revlon one is actually a little bit more creamier than the Give Beauty one. Um, probably because this is more like a cream finish versus this one, which is more like a satin matte. So yeah, so that's the only major difference. I really enjoy this one. And I think these lipsticks from Revlon are so worth the price. Um, they're just amazing, affordable lipsticks in general. And I think they stand up to a lot of higher end brands. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend um, kind of rediscovering this range if you haven't looked at this for a long time. So yeah, I really like the shade Rose Velvet. Um, the other one, like I said, uh, which I was using was this one from Give Beauty. And again, this one, again, easy to throw on neutral shades. So these two were like my neutral go-tos the whole month of September. And the other two shades are a little bit more punchy and I'm actually, oh yeah, did I mention I think I'm wearing, yeah, I'm wearing this Give Beauty Lovable Me lipstick right now on my lips and I really like it. It's, it's just, it's very comfortable. It feels lightweight and it's just, the shade is also just perfect. So yeah, so the other two color, the lipsticks that I used are colors which are more punchy, a little bit brighter. So one is this one from NARS and this is the NARS um, Sheer Lipstick in the shade Gypsy. So Gypsy is kind of like this brown red, brown pinky red is what I would call it. Um, it's a very beautiful shade and although it's a sheer formula, I feel like it gives enough pigment. If you go over it multiple times, you can pretty much make it opaque. So you can wear it both ways and I like how flexible it is that way. So I really like this formula. It's very comfortable again. It does not dry my lips out. And um, yeah, this particular shade is also very nice. It kind of um i wouldn't say it's 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 not a my lips for better kind of shade it's more a little bit more red but yeah it's not too red that you cannot wear it on a regular basis so it's like a very wearable ready kind of a lipstick reddish kind of lipstick so that's the other one that i was using the last one is actually a k-beauty lipstick and this is from the brand desic or i think that's how you pronounce it or is it dasik i'm not very sure so I think it's Dasik. Um, so yeah, so this particular lipstick is the Dasik Mood Glow Lipstick. And I have this in the shade 08. And this is extremely bright, like almost watermelon cherry pink. And this one is just perfect if you want like a very nice lip that kind of pops. And you don't, you're not really, uh, you just want to highlight that particular feature of yours. This one is fantastic. I really like this formula. I found it to be very comfortable. It's not too drying. Um, it's not too matte. It's it's just it's kind of like a satin finish, I would say. Although I think in the description for this lipstick, it says it's more of a creamy formula, or is it more like a balm? I believe they advertise this as sort of like a balm. I didn't find it to be as moisturizing as a regular like lip balm type of product, or even compared to some of the other K Beauty balm type lip products that I've used but it's still pretty comfortable. I would say this is more like a sheer-ish 
lipstick which you can easily build up um, and it's kind of um, not really that moisturizing so you do have to put in a lip balm before you apply this but overall I really like the shade I found it very nice to wear um, very comfortable not drying and it does not settle into the fine lines of my lips which is becoming a concern sometimes these days so I really enjoyed that one um, so yeah those are basically all the lip products that I used and in addition to that I have my usual base makeup which I've been using consistently for like months now I might actually switch up my um, makeup uh, what do you say base makeup this month I might actually try a new foundation which I've been wanting to try for a while this one is I think almost done the Ulta complexion crush medium coverage foundation pretty much done with it it's kind of almost empty so I'm kind of very happy that I finally at least tried to finish most of this one. And I mean, I, I really enjoy this foundation. So I, I wouldn't really see it as a task, but I just want to finish this before I start using another foundation. So yeah, so that one is the foundation that I used. And I usually like to mix in the Revlon Skin Lights Face Glow Illuminator with this foundation and it gives a very nice finish. And that's basically what I have on my face today and um yeah so that's basically all the makeup that i used i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you again in another one bye